Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where OP utterly and completely destroys his bully's life. Our next Reddit post is from Baron Von Durgo. A long time ago, I was a young man in an all-boys secondary school. So I was about 14 years old for you international readers. My friends and I were regularly bullied by a large group of older guys. Being typically nerdy boys, we were prime candidates for bullying. The only saving grace was that we were quite a large group ourselves, so no one person was targeted more than any other. Unfortunately, that didn't matter because the bullying was brutal. On our school grounds, there was a small cabin that belonged to the local Boy Scouts that we used to hang out around our lunch break. One day, we had a run-in with the bullies when they tried to steal our football. For daring to not hand it over, I was singled out for punishment. So four of them grabbed me, one grabbing each arm and a leg, and carried around the corner to a small courtyard with a flagpole in the middle. After a few punches for me struggling, I was swung backwards and forwards a few times, before being swung legs apart and full force into the flagpole. Any attempts to describe how painful that was wouldn't do it justice. Thankfully, one of my friends had made a run for a teacher, and one of the bullies spotted the teacher coming, so they dropped me and ran for it before they could get a second hit in. I was carried to the school office, nauseous and tears in my eyes as my mom was called. She found me with an ice pack between my legs, and nuts the size of oranges. As my mom was talking to the receptionist and teacher, my friends ran up to me and gave me a mobile phone. I was confused because I didn't own one. This was back when they weren't nearly as common as they were now. They didn't even have games on them back then. It was an early model Nokia with an LCD screen. I looked at my friend and asked him whose it was. He told me one of the bullies had dropped it as they ran off, and he thought that I should have it as a small way of getting back at him. I took the phone and left with my mom. That evening, I was in my bedroom feeling sorry for myself, and I'd forgotten about the phone in my blazer pocket until I heard it go off. I took it out and saw that he had received a text message from his girlfriend. This was before phones had sophisticated locks and the bully hadn't set up a passcode. I had no idea which of the bullies owned the phone, but at least now I knew his name. I decided to mess with this guy. I went to school the next day, but when I went back in, I talked to my friends about it and we came up with a plan. One of my friends who had a mobile phone texted this phone and me and him texted back and forth to make it look like we had a secret gay relationship. We carried on sending messages for the rest of the week and I was also replying to his girlfriend. Though I deliberately made my replies shorter and less intimate than they had been before. I arranged for my bully to meet his girlfriend for a date that Saturday, but obviously I was planning on standing her up. Then, I had my friend text my phone saying, Hey, you should ditch your girlfriend so you can come hang out with me, wink wink. I replied to my friend saying that I would blow off the girlfriend. So, I went to town where they were supposed to meet up for a date, and I saw a girl walk up and wait for a bit. She then got out her phone and typed a text. The phone went off in my pocket. I left it alone. She waited a few more minutes and texted me again. This time, I walked around the corner of a building and messaged her back asking who this was. She flipped out and shouted at me for messing with her. I told her that I had found this phone on the floor of a bus station and if she knew the owner then I would come by and give it to her so I could give it back to the original owner. She told me where she was so I waited like 5 minutes before walking around the corner and looking for her. Eventually through texting we found each other and I gave her the phone. She thanked me and we went our separate ways. On Monday, I told my friends what we'd pulled off and we just had to wait and see what happened. It didn't take long for gossip to start spreading through the school. The bully's girlfriend had read his messages and it appeared that she had been dumped so that he could have a gay affair. On top of that, she dumped the bully by going to his house on Sunday and calling him out in front of his parents, who, as it turns out, were not fans of that sort of thing at all. When he denied it, she pulled out the phone and read out message after message. His claims that he lost the phone over a week ago were ignored. In response, his parents pretty much disowned him, and he was only saved by his uncle who was a little more understanding. He lost contact with a lot of his friends because his uncle's house was a lot further away, so hanging out after school or on the weekend was almost impossible. 
and his preference for men was so well known around the school at this point that no girl seemed interested. As far as I know, his parents never took him back, and he moved to London to go to university to escape his reputation at home. I had only expected to break him and his girlfriend up, but this was an unexpected bonus. I would say that I went too far, but having your nuts smashed off by a flagpole tends to harden you to the plight of your bully. Our next Reddit post is from Deleted. My girlfriend and I were looking for places to live in a new city where she had just been accepted for an internship that didn't pay but would hopefully open big opportunities in the future. I traveled for work, so it'd be easy for me to live anywhere. We looked and looked, but there was nothing in our price range, so we increased a few hundred dollars and finally found a house. It was a bit pricey for what it was, but we weren't finding any other places. The lease term was written as one or two years. We went ahead and submitted an application, which we were pretty confident about since we had good credit and my job pays well. We specified that we wanted the one-year lease because my girlfriend's internship was only for one year long. So, a few days go by and we hear back from the agent. Our application was accepted, but the owner wants $150 more rent than was advertised per month since we only wanted to sign for one year. I mentioned that this seemed unfair because she had taken our $100 application fee before telling us about the price increase. But I kept it pretty civil because I didn't want to burn a bridge for the only viable option we had. She condescendingly assured me that this was perfectly legal and that the owner was entitled to it since he might have to go through the rental process again in one year. And since the rental market was so tight, they could do whatever they wanted. And she was right. We had no other options. So I told her that I was sorry and that I would call her back after discussing it with my girlfriend. We were so frustrated. This place was so expensive for what it was especially considering the condition that it was in. It was really tiny. The bedrooms were like 10 feet by 10 feet, which made me feel a little claustrophobic. And the walls were dirty from the former tenants, who apparently had a couple of big dogs living inside. There was literally dirt and grease smeared around the walls on the entire interior at about the height of a large dog. The yard was overgrown and trashed, but the lease said that the tenant would be responsible for all landscaping and even specified that we had to keep the lawn in good condition. The lawn was covered in like two foot high, completely dead weeds. We had convinced ourselves that we could deal with these problems. Scrub the walls and put on new paint, get a lawnmower off Craigslist and pony up the water bill for resurrecting the lawn. Be minimalistic with our possessions. Hopefully, the new paint would take care of the lingering dog smell. We each paid $50 for the application fee, but now we felt like we had been the victim of a bait and switch. But we had no other good options and our deadline was coming up fast. My girlfriend was crying and we both felt like homeless misfits who were terrible at life. I couldn't sleep in our hotel that night. But when I pulled up my bookmarked Craigslist housing searches, I saw something new. It was a place that looked nice and was about $500 cheaper. It was actually inside of our original price range. I cautioned myself that it was probably a scam, but I sent an email anyways and in the morning, I got a phone call from a nice old man. I set up an appointment and it was great, spacious, clean, and much cheaper. The landlord liked us, so we signed a lease the same day. We felt so lucky and happy. We were still angry about the other house. The agent had taken our $100 and then raised the price on us, probably because she knew how tight the rental market was in our area and that we might not have other options. At this point, it had been just one day since she informed us about the $150 monthly price increase. I typed an angry email about how she did a bait and switch on us, but I knew that it probably wouldn't get us our $100 back, and they probably wouldn't even read it. I asked my girlfriend if I should send it. She then came up with a brilliant plan for revenge. Do nothing. First, I deleted the email without sending it and we moved into our new place. A few days went by and I got a text message from the agent of the other house asking if we were still interested. I replied that we were still very interested and that we had gone on a trip but we'd be back in a week or so and we'd meet up then to sign the lease. She replied that since we were well qualified, that would be fine as long as we were sure that we wanted the place. So we started settling into our new place and enjoying ourselves. 
About 10 days later, I received a call from the agent who seemed to have forgotten about us. She was frantic about getting the lease signed. I made up excuses. My girlfriend was very ill. We need a few more days. We're still 100% interested and I'll call her on Monday and set up a meeting. On Monday, I typed up an email. Sorry, but we decided not to move in after all. Thanks anyways. My girlfriend and I smiled nervously together as we shot the email off. My phone rang almost immediately. It was the agent. I exchanged glances with my girlfriend and answered it, putting her on speakerphone. She was very upset that she hadn't shown the apartment to anyone for two weeks and her well-qualified tenants were dropping out. She pleaded with me to reconsider. What if I drop the price back to the original price in the ad? She asked with desperation heavy in her voice. Um, I pretended to think about it. I looked over at my girlfriend and she was silently laughing and hiding her face in her arms, overcome with emotion. I could feel the tension as the agent hung on my next words. Yeah, sorry, no. The agent was distraught. I hung up. My girlfriend's plan had worked perfectly. We felt avenged. Maybe next time she'll think twice before trying to pull a bait and switch. Down in the comments, we have a similar story from Mike Check 1 2. I did something similar during a contract negotiation. They made a lowball offer, and I was actually pretty insulted. It was originally a $15,000 contract, and they were offering maybe half that. They were the ones who had approached me, not the other way around. It was clear that they wanted me to do it, and the project was already in a time crunch. So what did I do? I turned off my phone and waited a day. The next morning, I turned my phone back on and had a slew of missed calls and messages. The first few were friendly. Hey, hope you saw my email. Looking forward to hearing back from you, type of thing. Then they got worried. Hey, would really like to hear back from you. Next, they got angry. We expected you to get back to us by now. That offer was honestly higher than what we thought it was worth. It's the best you're going to get. Then, finally, they resorted to apologizing, raising the offer to what I'd originally mentioned and begging me to take the contract. Essentially, I just ghosted them and let them negotiate with themselves, and it worked like a charm. If I had simply demanded the full amount outright, they probably would have declined and moved on. But since they felt like the offer was coming from them, they were happy to pay it in the end. Our next Reddit post is from Doogie Be Good. Sometimes, you only have a few seconds to get revenge on someone, and you have to take the opportunity. I was just a kid, and this whole thing plays out like a fake shower conversation, but I'm still so proud of myself when I look back on it. When I was 12, I was definitely one of the least popular kids in school, to the point of becoming depressed and suicidal. My parents pulled me out of school, sent me to therapy, and sent me to a private school where I was doing much better. A few months into this new school, I get a Friday night phone call from the most popular, prettiest, and meanest girl from my old school who loved tormenting me. Hi, this is Mean Girl. Who? Um, it's Mean Girl so-and-so? Okay. At this point, I hear some snickering in the background, sounding like it's coming from both guys and girl. I immediately know that this is a prank call. I was just wondering if you'd like to go out sometime. Huh. <laughs> With you? Yeah, it'll be fun, right? Ha! No, not at all! At this point, there's a few seconds of silence, both from her and the obvious kids in the background. Um, uh, okay. Ha! Huh, okay! I hear an oh in the background and the phone quickly hangs up. In an instant, I had just completely turned the tables on this girl. Me, just some random loser kid who had been tormented by her and her friends for a year. Some kid who they couldn't even leave alone after transferring schools. And I had just flat out rejected her and turned her into a joke in front of her friends. Down in the comments, someone asked OP if her perspective changed of him after that. OP replies, I only ever saw her once again since I'd changed schools. From what I remember, it was at a border sometime in high school and it was just a fleeting glance to which she quickly looked away. I heard stories that she would later become the girl who every other guy in high school had hooked up with. I'd like to think that was the result of me instilling a huge fear of rejection onto her, but that would be stretching it. Our next Reddit post is from Catheter Zeta Jones. I wouldn't say that our landlord is malicious, just dumb and lazy. 
I live in a condo tower where each unit is privately owned, and I rent from the owner of one suite. Recently, my bathtub faucet developed a small leak. I emailed my landlord about it, and he ignored it. A couple of days later, the leak had gotten bigger, so I emailed again. No reply. The third time, now it's a constantly running stream of hot water. I texted him, and he said that he's not going to fix it. Alrighty, buster, have it your way. So, I let the leak leak, and it keeps getting worse and worse. Two weeks later, I get an urgent call from the condo board that they need to have emergency access to my suite, because a leak from my suite is coming into the floor below and damaging several areas. Of course I say yes. They dispatch a plumber for the leak and numerous contractors to repair the rooms below that have been damaged. Eventually, the landlord gets a bill for $8,000 from the condo board for the repairs, and he finally emails me in a tantrum asking what this bill is for. So, I reply forwarding him the original emails and texts saying that he's not going to fix the leak. I never heard back. So, I guess this story is half malicious compliance, half regular revenge? Yo, OP, your landlord is a doofus. What did he think was going to happen? That the water was just magically going to vanish? That you were going to get bullied into paying for a plumber yourself? What a moron, man. That was r slash pro revenge. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.